the Romanian robot vacuum cleaners on the market with a static mop, with a vibrating mop and with regular mops, but there are hardly any cleaning robots. In 2020, Chewy released the iLife W400 with a gyroscope and a base on which the robot had to be placed after cleaning. Then two modifications of this model released, and that was it. But in 2022, Xiaomi introduced its own version of a vacuum cleaner. The SmartMe Vortex Wave robot vacuum cleaner is a premium robot. It cleans the floor and immediately sucks in dirty water, maps it with a ladder, returns to the station itself and rinses the roller. The nominal price of the kit with the station is $800. But with discounts, you can get it for $450 or $500. The offer seems tempting, but how good is the Smart Me Vortex Wave in reality? Let's unpack it, run a series of tests, and answer the question as objectively as possible. Let's start with the package. The box contains the original and beautiful robot, base similar to the standard one, only three times bigger. The dimensions are explained by the fact that inside it there is a storage place for a spare roller brush and service brush, power adapter with Euro plug, parking platform that docks to the docking station, additional container lid, we'll figure out what it's for later, a spare consumables, HEPA filter and porous filter, a brief and complete instruction manual, the delivery set is impressive, there's everything you need for continuous operation. Now let's talk about the robot itself. The manufacturer tried to make it look elegant and cut off the corners of the front panel, but still smart me Vortex Wave looks bulky. Because of the rectangular bumper it will be difficult to maneuver, especially since the body is 128mm high, which is almost 3cm higher than a standard robot with LiDAR. There's a LiDAR with a pressure sensor on the stern, and so if the smart me can still get under the coach, it won't get stuck there. There are a couple of buttons nearby, start, pause and return to base. When you press it, the indication comes on, the color of which can be used to judge the working condition. Under the lid there's a huge container, to remove it there's a folding handle. One of two lids is installed in the container, a lid with a float and a porous filter. It's used for wet cleaning. The lid without a float but with HEPA filter. It's used for dry cleaning. The volume of the compartment for garbage or dirty water is 360 milliliters. Clean water tank is under the plug. It holds 600 milliliters. Through the transparent walls you can see the pump pumping the liquid to the roller. Note that all holes in the container compartment are carefully sealed. There should be no leaks. The socket win is part of the bumper and slides back in case of a collision. The window at the top accommodates the IR sensors. On the side we find the TOF sensor, and on the back we find the base finder sensor, terminals and exhaust ports. The underside is unusual compared to most robots. In addition to the drive wheels there are three extra casters, one support and two swivel casters. They can get clogged with hair, so be prepared to clean them periodically. This is especially true for the left roller, which extends beyond the socket line. The main working tool is the soft roller, and behind it is a rubber scrapper that collects residual liquid from the floor. Sensors are installed along the perimeter. Water is pumped through four holes in front of the nozzle. To get the roll, you need to open the side lock. The roller can be replaced in seconds. The roller are not only different in color. The orange one has a uniform soft nap, while the blue one has strips of stiff bristles. In theory, the blue roller should handle stubborn dirt better, but in practice there's no difference. The docking station deserves special mention. Here's how it looks when fully assembled. The hinged lid holds the roller, cleaner and cleaning tool and the tray where they lie can be pulled out and rinsed with water. There are vents on the sides of the compartment to draw out moisture. The station pumps air through the tray and thereby dries the roller. According to the manufacturer, this system dries the roller in 4-6 hours, but in the winter it's more reliable to put the roller on the battery. On the front side of the station are spring-loaded terminals and locks to mount the packing platform. At the bottom are sturdy rubber feet. At the back is a cable duct where you can wrap up excess cord. In general, the robot is well assembled, the models fit together neatly. There are no complaints about the plastic, expensive and minimalistic. All in the style of Xiaomi, the Mi Home app is used for controls. In the search bar you need to enter Smart Mi Vortex Wave Robot Vacuum Cleaner. Installation is standard and takes two and a half minutes. The main screen of the app displays a map and cleaning data. There are quick zoning buttons on the right, local cleaning. 
target zone with the choice of the number of ASLs, cleaning in the desired room, and manual controls. You can switch to the joystick with a single press, instead of searching for this option in the menu. One of the advantages of the new interface. Another innovation is that there's no separate adjustment of power and weighting intensity. Now you can simply choose one of three modes, in which all cleaning parameters increase or decrease simultaneously. This has its own logic. The more abundant the robot weighs the floor, the greater the suction power should be. Otherwise, puddles will remain on the floor. In the advanced settings we can see cleaning history with the recorded movement patterns, scheduling walk by day of the week with the selection of the right rooms, do not disturb mods, turning off sound notifications and adjusting their volume, language selection, choosing the desired map, settings virtual walls and forbidden zones for different types of cleaning, room editor where you can change their boundaries and give them familiar names, a towel mod in which the robot moves with the letter Y, accessory wear and tear assessment, search by sound signal, service functions. The application is user-friendly and intuitive. The disadvantages are the lack of specific settings for each room and the slowness when loading the map. Let's move on to the test. The false sensors have finally been improved. Now they are not afraid of dark carpets, but they don't let the robot up to the stairs. And so it's safe to let Smart Me Vortex wave into high-rise buildings. The operating algorithm is the same as for round robots. Smart Me walks the perimeter and then zigzags through the rest of the space. The LiDAR is used to detect obstacles, so the vacuum cleaner tries to sweep objects from 13 cm high. But the maneuverability is not enough. For example, Smart Me caught the edge of the curtains with the bumper and almost got tangled. And so I recommend to lift them or put prohibited areas. The same goes for the dryer where the robot consistently gets stuck. You have to put a forbidden zone around the dryer, because the thresholds are poorly passable. The robot can somehow get over thresholds 15mm high, but at 20mm it hits the bumper. On large areas the Smart Me works efficiently, cleaning room by room. But there's often not enough space for maneuvering, because of which the cleaning speed suffers. The robot cleans one square meter in about one and a half minutes. Well, its around counterparts do it in a minute. In theory, this is not so bad because the robot gives each area more time. But the performance is reduced. At maximum suction power, the Smart Me walked for 64 minutes and cleaned 49 square meters. Could have walked longer, but when the charge dropped to 28%, the vacuum cleaner refused to continue cleaning and went to the base. The robot leaves an excessive reserve of energy to return home. Because of this, the performance potential is not revealed to the full. If the robot fails to clean the apartment in one walk cycle, it will resume after recharging. The soft roller is quieter than the tuba brush, so the Smart Me is quieter than average at 60 to 70 decibels. Dry cleaning is a secondary function of the cleaning robot, but you should still check how it's implemented. By default, the Smart Me works the stand twice around the perimeter and in zigzags. As you can see, the robot did a good job cleaning the middle of the booth, but there were no end brushes, so the grid near the walls was untouched. The final result on the laminate was 85%. The situation was the same with sand, good in the middle and nothing on the edge. Only 82% are collected. The problem is aggravated on carpets by the fact that the soft roller doesn't comb through the nap. That's why the crumbs and wool remain all over the area. On a thin carpet, only 70% of the debris is collected. And on a medium carpet, 50% of the debris is collected. On the plus side, it should be noted that the roller does not wind up the hair, and during dry cleaning it is virtually maintenance-free. The main function of the Smart Me is wet cleaning. Let's see how it handles different types of dirt. Diet coffee didn't give the cleaner much trouble. Within two minutes the roller got wet and started cleaning the stains. It took four passes to complete the task, but the result was ambiguous. Smart Me effectively rubbed the middle of the stand, but within 5-7 cm of the walls the stains remained. This is due to the gap between the roller and the edge of the case. I started the juice test with a soaked roller, so the Smart 
taught me was more effective. In four passes I got the whole coral clean. And even along the walls I got better results. Some stains were left in various places, but that's not critical. Most towels can't handle this kind of dirt at all. During a complex cleaning, Smart Me picks up clumps of earth and immediately cleans the floor. Four passes were enough to clean the entire paddock. Unlike robotic floor cleaners, Smart Me doesn't leave streaks even when dealing with extreme dirt. And spilled liquids were not problem for the cleaner. Coffee and tomato juice were removed in two passes. But the broken egg required two more passes with intermediate washing of the roller. But the final result is good, not even a shell remains. The hardest test was the ketchup. Here it took as many as 12 passes. The results before and after are on the screen. The Smart Me is definitely capable of fighting with such stains. And it has no rival among robots in this regard. Even if the final result is far from ideal, the water consumption is moderate. At a maximum, the tank is enough for 33 square meters. It is just enough for a small apartment. This is what the roller looks like after the test. Let's see if the robot can rinse it by itself. There's no special button in the app. You have to wait for Smart Me to pack and start cleaning itself. Let's see the result. The roller is noticeably cleaner. I think that with regular cleaning this would be enough. But in our case we have to additionally rinse it under the tap. I remind you that Smart Me not only washes but also dries the roller in the storage compartment. There's a small fan for this purpose. Xiaomi's experiment was a success. Smart Me Vortex Wave inspires confidence, works without critical failures, and in general copes with its tasks. The robot cleans floors no worse than a handled vacuum cleaner. It easily collects liquid, scrubs away stubborn dirt, picks up soil and removes dirt. The coolest part is that the Vortex Wave doesn't leave dirty streaks even when dealing with extreme dirt. But there are functional limitations. Despite its impressive performance, the Smart Me isn't suited for Carpets, doesn't wash well along walls, and is prematurely sent to base. The optimal location for this model is a small apartment with spacious room and minimal fine carpets. If you are looking for a washable robot vacuum cleaner, you can safely take note. In the premium class, competition simply doesn't exist.